Well, here I am nestled up in some rocks along with some uh, little lithophytic and behind me you can see epiphytic ferns. Um, these two groups of ferns are actually quite common here in Japan. Uh, this is an extremely moist climate most of the year. Uh, most of uh, southern Japan qualifies as temperate to subtropical rainforest, depending upon where you're at. And uh, it just so happens that uh, my area is full of these kinds of ferns. So today, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the more common species that you see locally. Uh, these two right here are pretty common. As you can tell, I'm by a roadway here, and you probably hear cars going by. I'm sure most people live with these plants all around them are completely oblivious to their presence. Well, let's go take a look at them. Without a doubt, the most common epiphytic fern in my area is this fern. This is um, Leposaurus thimbergianus. It's also quite common throughout much of uh, Asia. In Japan, it can be found as far north as uh, even southern Hokkaido, which is fairly remarkable. Um, it is veritably a uh, epiphytic weed here, and here it's growing on a, uh, a plum tree, Prunus mume, which is actually really an apricot. Uh, and uh, we'll see that this thing can grow virtually on just about any perch. A favorite habitat of this fern are uh, concrete walls like this along this roadway. They also grow well on native rock. The only place they can't grow is actually in soil. Here's the plant in its desiccated state. Uh, it looks like it's a goner, but it isn't. Once the rains come, all of these ferns will rehydrate. Here are the spores. Uh, these are produced in huge quantities and that's why this is such an epiphytic weed and it really has to be kept out of the garden. It takes over everything. Very common species. Uh, this is Lemophyllum microphyllum, also known as green penny fern in English. Um, here, I'll go ahead and go down here so you can see these amazingly thin little rhizomes that this plant grows from. Fascinating. Um, you will also notice that uh, there are two leaf types here. There are these round, sterile uh, fronds. And let me go ahead and uh, sneak up here and hopefully get a good look at this. And up here you can see the fertile fronds are those elongate structures with the, uh, the sori underneath. Like Leposaurus thimbergianus, uh, this species likes to uh, colonize any rough surface, so rock and tree, and in this case, this is a, um, a retaining wall, believe it or not, made of concrete along this road that uh, this species and other mosses are just taking over. While this species loves to grow on rocks like this, it can also be found um, growing on trees as well. I've never seen it growing terrestrially. I don't believe it's possible. And here you can see it growing up epiphytically up this tiny little tree. Um, they grow on all kinds of branches. They could take a fair amount of drying, but uh, this is a fern that prefers moisture environments. A plant that any uh, epiphytic fern enthusiast knows well is this, uh, Pyrosia lingua. This uh, common southeastern species is uh, fairly cold resistant, living well up into Honshu Island. Um, it's called Hitotsuba in Japanese, which literally means one leaf, since this is also another simple frond uh, type fern. This large boulder is a fairly typical habitat um, for uh, this species. <clears throat> it prefers um, drier sites, uh, so it, while it can be found growing at times as a terrestrial, it is most commonly seen either growing on rocks or even on trees, although I've seen it mostly on big uh, rocks like this. Uh, this is another ribbed leaf species, and um, while I have been uh, 
unsuccessful in finding mature spore, here you can get a sense of how it spores. The spores are diffused over the entire uh, lower surface of the frond. Uh, they are naked, that is that they have no inducia uh, to cover them, uh, which is kind of like a protective covering in many fern sori. Uh, so uh, I'll keep looking for a mature spore, but I don't think I'm going to find any today. Another simple frond uh, lithophytic fern in Japan is uh, the Plasium subsinuatum. Uh, this is called uh, Herashida in Japanese, which just means spatula fern. Common fern throughout uh, Southeast Asia. Um, these are uh, pretty common here in wet areas. These are actually growing in this spot as uh, terrestrials, uh, but they always grow in an extreme uh, slope and also uh, in very, very wet places. Also commonly found on rocks. Here's a close-up of the frond. You can see it's very simple and the midrib is uh, very obvious in the middle there. And um, here also the stipe you can see is very elongate, probably accounting for at least a third of the frond length. Um, that kind of ribbing on the surface tells you uh, what's underneath, and what's underneath are spores and sori patterns. And they are arranged in uh, linear parallel lines like that, which is a dead giveaway for identifying this one in the field. Here's another lithophytic fern in the Fukuoka area. This is called um, Iwahitode in Japanese, which means rock starfish. I'm guessing because of the spreading uh, multipinnate fronds. Um, this is a bipinnate fern, so again, fairly simple as most of the lithophytic ferns go uh, in Japan. Uh, this is Coralysis elliptica and is found throughout much of uh, Japan and the warmer parts of so central to southern Japan and indeed is a common uh, lithophyte and probably epiphyte uh, throughout much of southern Asia. I've never seen it growing as an epiphyte in this area. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it now. Um, if you turn it over and take a look at the sori pattern again. Um, again, it's a kind of a straight line parallel pattern, uh, which is typical for this genus. Here's a close-up look of the uh, rhizome you can see creeping along this rock. Um, these are true lithophytes. Another fairly rare species uh, in my area is this microsorium. This is microsorium burgerianum and here you can see it growing up a uh, Zelkova serrata tree. Um, this plant is very easy to confuse with uh, Pyrosia lingua but there's an easy way to tell them apart. I mean after a while you just get used to seeing the difference. Um, but I'll show you, it's the spores. What's interesting about this species is that it can grow as an epiphyte as you've just seen. Here it's growing terrestrially below those bushes there. And also it's growing over rocks. Actually, you can see it growing up in this bush here, growing along the, uh, those little thin stems. So it's definitely an epiphyte. And also here it is growing on a rock and you can see the uh, trailing rhizome there. 
Japanese name is a mouthful. It's Nukaboshi Kuriharan. Um, Kuriharan is the next species we'll be seeing, which is Neocheiropterus and Sata. Someone thought that these two look very similar, uh, and indeed the sori patterns are very similar, but these are two very different ferns. Nuka means rice bran, and Boshi means star. So this literally means uh, rice bran star. So somebody thought that the sori looked like rice bran, and since they're in the little spots like that, they also thought they looked like stars, and they looked like the next fern. Here's another lovely lithophytic to uh, terrestrially growing fern in southern Japan. This is Neocheiropterus hostata. Um, this fern is quite common in my area. And uh, one of the delightful features of this fern, you'll notice, is that if it's growing on the edge of a clearing, like there's a little clearing behind me, uh, all of the leaves point in one direction, and so it creates a very dramatic effect. Okay, here's the leaf up close. I mean, these really are lovely plants, and they make a wonderful garden plant, so I highly recommend if you can grow this to try to get one. Um, here is the uh, spore. The sori patterns, as you can see, they're very much like the microsorium, uh, hence the identification uh, through the names of both of them. These again are, are naked and uh, they're spread out in a kind of an irregular pattern all along the midrib of the uh, of the frond, and uh, just a fantastic, fantastic looking fern. I mean, look at that. Uh, sheen coming off there and the ruffling of the leaf. Uh, just a lovely, lovely species. Kuriharan literally means chestnut leaf orchid. These are obviously not orchids, but uh, someone thought that the leaves look both like chestnut trees and an orchid leaf. Here's the trailing rhizome of this species. Um, plants in this area seem to be mostly growing as terrestrials, but this illustrates how this um, fern can grow over these rocks. This rock is uh, right next to a, um, a stream, and uh, there's the trailing rhizome, and they just spread out over these rocks and form extensive colonies. Well, hallelujah, here are some Neocheiropterus estata growing, as I told you, as lithophytes. They're growing along a, um, a little creek here that's been bounded on one side by uh, a stone wall, actually a really concrete wall, and uh, you can see that they're growing up along this wall. And here's a mixed colony of the Neocheiropterus, and uh, over here in the back is the Microsorium growing up that Zelkova tree. Quite a rich environment for epiphytic ferns. Well, thanks for watching today's video. I realize it was pretty dense with all those names. Um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be uh, going to Kikuchi Gorge, which is a fantastic place for epiphytic ferns, so please stay tuned for that. And uh, well, we'll see you next time.